All right. Thank you, everybody. It's good to be back. Uh, for those of you who have been here for an hour, uh, yeah, we've, we've been up here for an hour talking to you already uh, because Andy doesn't believe in daylight savings time. Right. So thanks for, thanks for joining us that early. Uh, it's great to be in front of a crowd again. Uh, Andy and I have just been doing push-ups in the back room for about a month now. So yeah, is it noticeable? It's good to be out here. Uh, Cross-country season is in full swing. So is the marathon season. Uh, a lot of good results out there, and we're going to cover it in the, uh, in the coming minutes. Yeah, we also got Peter Bromka here and silver, Olympic silver medalist Evan Jager is in the house. So let's give it up one more time. Let's welcome to Trackland. Here we go. All right. Well, they said it was called Kick the Bridge. Uh -huh. So I took the bridge. The first thing I could think of was uh, a Jaeger bomb. So, a bomb! A Jaeger bomb. Okay, PSA for, uh, for everybody out there uh, who's a Tracklandia fan and would like to come. Uh, book your tickets to Portland. Uh, but you can do that by checking at PDX track on Instagram and you'll usually get updates, I don't know, within the week of the next episode or something. So I'm sorry about the flight fares and all that, but uh, we're doing the best we can here. Uh, also, if you have any critiques for us, any, uh, any insults you'd like to throw out there, slip into our DMs. Hit us uh, up. Fuel for the fire. There right? you go. Yeah. What doesn't yeah. kill you makes you stronger. It's That's great what sell. they say. Great stuff. <laughs> yeah. How have you been, Jeff? I've been great. Uh, how have you been? Oh, fantastic. You know, Halloween was just a few days ago. I Yeah, what were you? I conquered the night as a Green Ranger. Oh, nice. Like yeah. a Green Beret type guy? Or? A Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. That yeah. show from back when we grew up. Yeah. Yeah. Our childhood. Though. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Well, well, tell me what you were. I obviously have to assume you did something on Halloween. I just, I wore a wig and sat on the couch and watched Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, while eating Shalane's fart like chili from her run fast eat slow oh actually yeah i was actually very surprised to see a carrot in there you usually don't find carrots in chili oh I mean, you cooked it i assume i didn't i did oh. somebody else did <laughs> oh, nothing yeah. wrong with a surprise carrot i, I don't even know they just threw this bowl at me and said it's shalane's fart like chili try it That's fantastic what I ate it. yeah well mm. let's get to some news yeah let's do it shall we new york city marathon uh recently happened uh, Mary Catani was our winner in 222, and Lalisa Desisa in 205.59 were our two winners. Fantastically fast times. But we want to do a quick shout out to our, our, our Portland ties, our Portland runners. Yeah. If you, quick, quick shout out to Shalane Flanagan, third place in 226.22. Shout out to Scott Fable. Fable. Fable? How do I say it? Fable? Fable? Yeah, Fable. Fable? Fable? Scott Fable. Scott yeah. Fable. Scott Fable, seventh in 212.28. Oh, oh, we passed him. Oh, we? you went too fast. No. Nope, that's not right either. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Chris Derrick, shout out, 10th place in 213.08. Carrie Dimoff, 14th in 231.12. Oh, there's Scott. <laughs> yeah. So this is Scott. Yeah. That, this is Scott. 212.28. There it is. Uh, and then, then Carrie Dimoff. Let's see who's up next. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, it Carrie is Dimoff. In uh, 14th in 231.12, and also Ryan Vale in 14th in 215.31. Those are our, sh our shout out to locals, local Portland runners. Um, also, New York runner President Peter Chacha's last New York marathon at the helm of New York Roadrunners. He's led the organization since the great Mary Weitenberg stepped down in 2015. Yeah, Peter Chacha, better known to his friends as. Oh, this is Peter Chacha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, better known to his friends as. There it is. Oh. Oh. Cha 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 cha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had to wait for that. We like the cha cha slide. <laughs> hey, yeah. Better known to his friends as Cha 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 Cha. Uh, his retirement party is sponsored by the New York City's title sponsor, Tata Consulting Agencies. 
which makes it the ta 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 cha cha. <laughs> so if you've gotten a uh, if you've gotten an invite to this party, a nice gift for Mr. Cha Cha might be one of Ben Blanket's tiny ships. <laughs> Which, if you watched last episode, uh, this is what Ben does in the off season. He goes out, chops down trees in neighborhood parks, builds canoes out of them. Buy yours at BenBlankensTinyShips.com. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, yeah, this year's race was another successful event in New York, and uh, the New York Roadrunners continue to be the pinnacle organization for road racing in the U.S. And we would like to wish Peter Cha Cha a very happy retirement. All right, moving on. Cool. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to edit out that gap so it just sounded like the applause came right after yeah. that. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't give you guys a cue or anything. Yeah. That was our bad. All right. Yeah, so we now know uh, what Sydney McLaughlin will be wearing on her feet when she sets the world record in the 400 meter hurdles. Mm. Uh, yeah, she supposedly. Uh, in a study done by Let's Run, uh, interviewing a lot of these agents out there, they said that her, her contract could be worth anywhere from $25 to like over $1.5 million. Million dollars. Could be billion if she won the lottery. We don't know. Yeah, if she got that $1.6 billion, then she doesn't even need like a New Balance contract. I, I don't know who won that. Do we know who won that? Someone from South Carolina. Really? Yeah. Check her address. I don't know. <laughs> New Balance could be saving a lot of cash right now. That could be very true. Uh, also, New Balance sponsored sprinter Trayvon Brumell uh, has released a music video entitled Survived, chronicling his experience growing up in the South and perse persevering through rough circumstances. And from our trained ears, sounds pretty, sounds good. pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like right. pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know a lot about that kind of music, but it sounds good. Yeah, sounds all right. You can find it on the same service that hosts your favorite niche, small track focus series. It's on YouTube. It's, it's on, on YouTube, YouTube, yeah. It's on YouTube. We're on YouTube also. That's us, huh? the small track. Yeah, other music videos you can check out are uh, Let You Go by Ricky Roxford. <laughs> there it is. Eric Jenkins. And Break It Up by Carl Lewis from back in the day. I recommend watching this video. It's entertaining. Yeah, I like it. I think it's fun that athletes are doing these other things. Um, in, mar oh, sorry. in marathons, a lot of things can happen. It's just a really long race, honestly. But the Portla Portlandathon. Got it, the button more. wasn't working, sorry. You wanna hit that one more time? Oh, yeah. There we go. The Portlandathon happened and athletes had to stop by a train right next to the finish. Didn't quite get the, that full effect. A lot of things can happen in a marathon because it's 26.2 miles. You never know. You never know. Well, and also the Venice Marathon happened. Uh, runners had to wade through ankle-deep floodwaters. Yeah. Oh, push the button. There you go. Venice, yeah. Venice is known to be sinking at about 1.2 millimeter per year, which is due to the plate tectonics. and. Can, it's sinking. Hey, it's, it's sinking. Yeah. Yeah, Venice is sinking. Uh, I mean, due to climate change, all that stuff, oceans are rising. But we're not part of the 90% of scientists who uh, believe that climate change is human enforced. Heck, we're not even part of the 10% of scientists who run a little cold and have to wear their lab coats to the beach. Uh, <laughs> this might come as a shock to all of you, but we're not even scientists. Uh, but I can tell you that next year's Tour de France might look a lot like this. And, and also next year's Breaking 2 might look a lot like this. <laughs> Heck, we're not going to reverse course at all. Let's just go for Breaking 1. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're back to some serious business here. Yeah, right, right. <clears throat> Half marathon world record was broken recently. Abraham Kiptum in, in Valencia, 4.27 pace per mile, ran 58.18. Yeah, and in our opinion, not enough of a fuss was being made about this race. And I think it has a lot to do with the term half marathon. Go on. All right, I think it's demeaning. I think uh, the term automatically compares you to the full marathon. So it's like the JV marathon the not as good marathon, the RC Cola marathon. You know, Andy, the origin story of the marathon is poetic. Pheidippides ran from Marathon to Athens to tell the Athenians of the victory 
of the Greeks at the Battle of Marathon. And he did this because he was filled with joy. What does it say? From Lucan's account, Pheidippides brought the news of victory from Marathon and addressed the magistrates' session when they were anxious how the battle had ended. He said, joy to you, we've won. And there and then he died, breathing his last words with the, his last breath with the words, joy to you. Oh, the half marathon? Yeah, it's half of that. <laughs> the marathon actually killed a man. You only ran half the distance. It allows your smart-ass uncle to say, what, you couldn't run the full marathon? It's a respectable distance, Andy, so what if it didn't kill the first guy that did it? If uh, Pheidippides had handed off 13 miles in, you might still be alive today. <laughs> yeah, that's an iPhone water belt thing. Yeah, so we know the public is captivated by a good heart-wrenching story around athletic feats. Uh, so what we want to do is we've attempted to capture uh, this modern saga of the half marathon in a story that is beautifully written by one of our interns, actually. So, picture this. A cool night in Eldoret, Kenya. Our story's hero, Abraham Kiptum, exits the club. His boys have gone home long ago, so he must find his own way back. It's 13.1 miles back to his pad. He pulls out his phone and sees that the closest Uber, a 1972 Cadillac Eldorado, is 58 minutes and 20 seconds away. <laughs> he knows that if an Uber is going to take that long, a taxi isn't even worth it. He pulls out his earbuds and plugs them into his phone. Scrolling through his playlist, he selects Bob Seger's Running Against the Wind album from 1980. The album's only 40 minutes and 24 seconds long, but the remaining time will allow him to reflect on the past week. He presses play and begins to cruise. Isn't it crazy how the night moves? He takes a left down on Main Street and picks up speed like a silver bullet. As he runs, a mantra creeps into his mind. Elder at home. Elder at home. Elder at home. If you say it fast, it kind of sounds like El Dorado. El Dorado, the city of gold. By the time the final lyrics of Shining Brightly fade out, and then 18 more minutes pass, the sun is just cresting over the horizon. The streets sparkle as if they're paved in gold. Our hero has made it home safely. In 58 minutes and 18 seconds, he's found the prize of his reverie mattress, based in Portland, Oregon. As he closes his eyes, he whispers one last time, El Dorado, don't call it a half. Take this as a public service announcement from Tracklandia. Don't measure your performance in the El Dorado based on the marathon. It's not the size of your race, it's how you fill it. In this season of the marathon, don't sell yourself short. Be confident in the length of your race. Chicks dig confidence, and so does Evan Jagger. <laughs> All right. Woo! Gonna need, a, gonna need a minute to recover from that one. Yeah, let's take a breather on that. Uh, the corporate world can be mostly focused on the bottom line, but Nike did something extraordinary recently. Yeah. Uh, they signed a kid named Justin Gallegos, Gallegos from Southern California to a professional running contract. Uh, Justin has cerebral palsy, uh, but is emphatic that it is not a, dis a disability. He's used to it as a way to inspire others to go after their goals. Incredible. Honestly, incredible that Nike is giving him a platform to reach a broader audience. Is John, you know John Truex? It's John Truex who set that up. Yeah, and I think this is just great because uh, it is typically, or you always hear that the the goal of signing professional athletes is to inspire many more people to do great things, and they do. They do do that. Uh, but when you have somebody like this, who every day has to go out there and overcome an obstacle, uh, like we all do, uh, it just allows allows you to, to get your work done and to be inspired and go after your own goal. And uh, I think it's, it's amazing that they're, they're allowing him this platform to share that message. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, John Truax, he's a heart and soul of, uh, of Nike running, in my opinion. But, For sure. Uh, yeah, but it, it only seemed right to, to, to wrap up our news and notes segment with, with a feel-good story like this one. Uh, and so well, without further ado, we're going we're gonna to pause for a station, station identification. Yeah. So.
All right, that's, yeah, that's the news. That's the news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so our first guest has produced some amazing articles as well as racing performances. Uh, his article, The Marathon Doesn't Owe You Anything, has been widely read and shared amongst training partners. He's a local runner repping the BTC Elite. Please give a warm welcome for our friend Peter Bromka. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Peter. There you are. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. This is at uh, Take the Bridge, not too many. No, not too long ago. Yeah. I was getting my ass handed to me by a couple faster get dudes, but just trying to look good for the cameras. So it goes. Yeah, so it is. <laughs> it's all for social media now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. out early in that race, right? Well, they said it was called Take the Bridge. Uh huh. So I took the bridge. <laughs> and then there were three and a half miles left. There were other bridges. And I got right totally right. out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh,. I did get a Strava segment that uh, is hanging in there by one second. Oh, good. I'm still. actively uh, updating and flagging people who take it away from me. But it's still in there. It's still oh, really? There. Yeah. But, yeah uh, I don't know a whole lot about the Strava thing. Is it's it? an internet phenomenon. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I have been told that you have a, a Strava segment in front of your house, though. Uh, yeah. There, a friend, uh, you know, you can make your own segments. He came out, made a segment in front of my house. Then another friend. I actually was drinking a cup of coffee, came out, and I caught him coming down the block. I was like, hey, you! And he's like, he got startled and just turned around. He was, he was coming, you know, trying to take Bronco's block. So your buddy <laughs> just made a segment in front of your house. That said, I own your block. <laughs> <laughs> and then he took it. Well, then, yeah, and then I took it because I live there. So, I mean, you gotta I, put a flag I tried down. to represent. But then, yeah, other guys, other friends, I don't think it's widely known about, but he, now it might be. Yeah, and now no. I'm at risk of losing it. Um, yeah, we won't but, reveal yeah. your address. Yeah, no, it's okay. You yeah, are you listed? Out. Yeah, it's all online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. How have you been? Good, yeah. Uh, tired, just training for the next marathon a month away. So I'm at that like month out where everything hurts and you're tired all the time. I've never done a marathon, so I don't know what that's like. I wouldn't but, think so. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that sounds, it sounds like a taxing experience. It's tiring, um, but it's also fun because you find other crazy people who are willing to meet up for runs and just, you know, make it normal. You yeah. You're like, okay, I guess like 6, 7 a.m. on Saturday, that'll be a normal time to go throw down and be delirious. But Works yeah. for me. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, you've written, you've written a lot of articles about running and, and uh, in particular the marathon. Um, and this one, the marathon doesn't owe you anything, uh, got a lot of coverage recently. Yeah, it sort of took off. I, uh, it all started a couple years ago. I said, Tracklandia is going to come out in a couple years. How do I get on there? Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need to build it up. Um, no, actually. This is good. Um, a lot of kids out there thinking that same thing, you got to think right? in the long term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Start now. Um, no, it's pretty, it was cool. I, um, four years ago, I ran the Chicago Marathon. At the time, my father was going through a lot of health uh, conditions, so in a sort of meaningful way, the two smashed together and created the story where I met my goal. He was success had successful heart surgery. I'm not going to cry. Um, and it just it made so much sense as a story that I wrote it up and just put it online. Like I don't know who will appreciate this, but um, a lot of people did. It got passed around. Um, I'll brag for a second. I sent it to Andy Burfoot, the former editor of, of course, Runners yeah. World, and he, he wrote me back, which I didn't expect. And then he said, you know, Peter, I get a lot of these, which I expected. And he said, and most of them are shit, <laughs> but this one's pretty good. So I was like, there you <laughs> That's go. Good. That's yeah. Yeah. You for, made the cut. Yeah, for a post you throw online. Um, and then, really, it's been a fun way to document my own experiences. Like, I ran in college. I ran in high school, then I ran in college. And college was so much fun, but so hard and I was injured so much that like, it just became this bit really painful experience uh, that running competitively. And I've had so much fun with the marathon that I've been like, I don't ever want to forget these memories. So I've written them up into stories and people have enjoyed them and passed them around. So that all led up to uh, the last one I wrote about my personal race was in December last year about mm -hmm. CIM that went really well. And it was all about camaraderie and my VTC teammates and I training for this race and sort of having this crazy dream to try to run fast. Um, but then around Boston, so Boston, we all know, like, it was super rainy, really stormy, and I saw a couple of people post, like, I didn't get the race I deserved. Mm. And it sort of stuck in my mind, like, what the hell does that mean? 
Mm -hmm. They didn't get the race they deserved. Desi Linden won. It was amazing. Yuki like came out of nowhere. Like it was a great day. And I, my reaction was like, Marathon doesn't know you shit, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's the whole point. And that's what's so amazing. And so as I started to unpack it, what I realized is like I've actually done well in races where people have been like blown up because they're like, I was supposed to get a good day, tailwind, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, well, I don't know, let's go. Um, so you don't expect anything yeah, from, I mean, from this race that's going the into it? And I say that and then, you know, a month from now, I'm still, I'm still checking the weather app, like, come on, give me some. Oh, sure, you want a good one. Yeah, you want a good one. But the, the best part about it is like, I always say like in middle school, you run the 800 and you're like as good as you are. And then in high school, certain people are really good at the 800. I'm looking at you right. and like, rock at and like some of us get left in the dust and then in college not so good at the 800 again <laughs> you find out there's better guys in the 800 <laughs> yeah <laughs> people who sit in the cv for me so yeah. then you kind of get to longer distances and you get to the marathon and you realize oh there's all these components and i think it was uh brad hudson said years ago he's like all pro runners think they could run 210 because mm -hmm. that's five minute pace so it's like 210 right i can then. run 210 all day mm -hmm. he's like cool you know how many people have run 210 you know how many people actually run 210? And then sure enough, every year, like all these guys are lined up, they're gonna run 210, they don't run 210 because there's so many variables. Yeah, um, and it's interesting when you watch the end of these things too, because I, I watched the end down in Sacramento last year. And traditionally, when you watch the end of a track race, the winner looks good. Like he's like, he's like floating to the finish line. People behind him might not look so good, but the winner usually looks good. But in this case, like the winner of the marathon looked terrible it's like he's dancing on sticks trying to get to the finish line and then it was tim ritchie last year yeah, and then he crosses the finish line and just pukes everywhere yeah. and it's like yeah you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna skate by this one that's how it happens it's, yeah. it's a rough day that's the beauty of the like the last six miles is you often hear from people who are less experienced like oh i i just felt like shit that last six miles and you're like uh-huh but that, like that is the marathon and then what'd you do about it like how did you weather that storm and yeah that's see, what you're saying people love about it too yeah, yeah it just like sets up this this thing where it smashes everyone and then you see where the chips like whereas you know you get out it's a four mile race some of the guys recent up alums we have other uh people from around the city who i'm like pretty much every damn day you're gonna beat me every uh -huh. damn day so, but when you're running i ran new york a couple years ago and pros are walking along the side of the course because like their day is done and you're like holy shit, let's go let's go let's go yeah. <laughs> um, so you're just saying that you're super tough yeah. you can weather it better than anybody right <laughs> i definitely set myself up for failure at this point uh, <laughs> but it helps to have a guy or a group of guys to train with and you train with a good uh, btc elite group you're out there yeah uh, a lot of the weekends and week workouts yeah i think it's it's been super fun at some point my buddies who don't run are like so you're, that's basically golf. Like you get like five hours away with your buddies hanging out. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like golf. And my buddies who fly fish are like, that's like fly fishing. Like <laughs> yeah. it's time away with your buddies. Um, and it is, it's like a, it's become a thing where people will write me from all around the world and be like, man, it's so inspiring. Thanks for writing this up. I train all alone, like in the winter, like have no one to do any of my work with. I'm like, oh shit, that, like, that sounds really hard. Um, that's not, sort of what they're hoping for well, in that's, response. Yeah, that's what I love about the sport too, is that like, it's a sport that's very solitary, but because uh, you're the only one that knows what it's like, then you get a lot of other people who are just like that. And there's this community that, that develops from these loners who are out there. Yeah, we've running. linked up. I mean, I've, I know all sorts of people from different clubs in Portland because um, sort of at shorter distances, you get these intense rivalries, you know, um, and then at the longer distances, I mean, I remember, I know some guys in the crowd, I had no, no idea who they were, but leading up to Boston 14, I asked some friends like, someone must be training for this race. Like, how do I find the people who will show up to Savi Island at 7 a.m.? And they're like, oh shit, you wanna do that? Like, yeah, but call this guy. We're yeah, good. where are my dudes? <laughs> I need show some up to dudes. the parking lot, sun's coming up, and like, <laughs> there's some random people you never met before, like, hi, I came for a long run. I don't need a bunch of guys out there, I need dudes. <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you got this camaraderie with all your dudes out there. Yeah, I'm a dudes. But you also know that with fame comes uh, comes a lot of uh, ridicule. A little rivalry. Yeah, and you get uh, you get some haters recently <laughs> on Let's Run dot com on the message boards. <laughs> some of the trolls, if you will, yeah. uh, were out there. I think this is one message that I pulled off that said, uh, or it was referencing uh, your your goal of, of 
uh, getting the Olympic trials qualifier, uh, yes. which is a big goal that you put out there for yeah. yourself. Yeah, decided to throw it out there. Yeah, which is a, it's a lofty one, but you're not too far away. But yeah, uh, this is a response from somebody uh, to that statement, and they said, can't wait to read Bromka's 9,000-word blog about his 227. <laughs> I, I was overjoyed to hear it. Uh, <laughs> couldn't, my favorite thing about the internet is like people talk shit, um, but also some people just like put it right on the nose and are so accurate. So I wrote this whole thing about the <laughs> marathon, and one guy tweeted back, he's like, I get it, marathon's super unpredictable. Why'd you have to take so many words? So I'm like, why <laughs> did I have to make I should have wrote, the marathon is unpredictable. Yeah. But then you get into like the little rivalries, um, and it's been fun. Like the camaraderie of the BTC guys and I have is matched up against there's greater boston track club in boston we we go against them in the boston marathon every year and then yeah but this statement well, yeah do you, yeah do you think I this let, is the dirty work of the jacuzzi boys it might be do you think it is <laughs> <laughs> they left some crumbs along their trail yeah well yeah, <laughs> well, yeah you think that because on social media they say fly the black and then his name was fly the black oh yeah i'm putting th one right on the nose i'm, I'm there. jumping i'm jumping to conclusions here but uh, I love it. I like to say, like, no one can make fun of you more than you better be ready to make fun of yourself. So I sent it to my buddies, uh -huh. 9,000 word essay about his 227, and my buddies wrote back, like, if it's not 10,000 words, I'm not even opening it. You know? <laughs> like, it better just be, if you read 227, it better be a bunch of gibberish. It just extends for pages and pages. Yeah, because you know those jacuzzi boys are going to read every word, too. <laughs> they need some we, Yeah, we act like it's, uh, you know, head-to-head, uh, -head, but... I read everything they post, and I'm guessing. Yeah. But you guys don't like each other at well, all. Well, they're not yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, yeah. it's good to, have, uh, good to have fuel for the fire. Yeah. Especially try in not the last to train six miles. Them. Yeah. Is that what you're going to be thinking about in the last six miles? Yeah. Pure, utter hatred of the Jews. you got to run on hate. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get me through. Fidipides ran on joy. You run the marathon on hate. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for the coaching. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, before you leave, I, I, uh, you said that you had a story to tell us about. Oh, a, my Jaeger story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's oh, got a Jaeger story. you pronounce it with a Y? I mean, the low, oh, how is it pronounced? Is it Y or J? J. <laughs> it's J. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all learned something today. <laughs> yeah. So I have a three-year-old son, and this feels like a non sequitur. I'll bring it back. Um, a couple years ago, I, my parents offered to pick him up from daycare, and you think, oh, night off, as long as he's alive and fed the next day, sure. he'll be good. So I'm going about what you do when you don't have a kid, you just carefree, don't even know what time it is, and text my dad, how are things going? Like, everything good? I could see you on like a foam roller in this situation. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing extra core. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh. really relaxed. Um, everything, I think the text, you know, everything good? And you're thinking, like, is he fed? Is he going to get to bed anytime soon? And you get back, uh, yeah, just had, had him signed by an Olympian. <laughs> <laughs> Not the response you expect. Do you have my photo? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> poor Evan ran into my father, who's shameless, in the grocery store. <laughs> my, <laughs> my dad doesn't want an autograph, you know, to sell online or to keep her keeps like, no, like, no, sign my grandson. Sign my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his fudgy little hand. He's like, one year. That's so cute. He's going to remember that forever. And my favorite... Uh, and then did your dad get his head signed after that? <laughs> <laughs> or is that... marker. No, my turn. It's a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, uh, I heard that this story, I told this story to my friends who heard it worked its way back to the BTC network, and then the way it was told to me was Evan walked into the kitchen and his pro teammate said, you're signing kids now? Yeah. <laughs> it, like, got, it got down to him that fast. I got, uh, yeah, it's wow. not his fault. It's not his fault. It's Word my dad's fault. Fast. Yeah, there you go. So, well, that's, in, that's incredible. I'll get out of the seat. And, and uh, uh, well, well yeah, here. well, just a second. I just want to say thank you for being on. Thanks for coming on and uh, imparting some marathon wisdom to us. And uh, I hope you get a few Eldorados in there yourself <laughs> along with the marathon. But uh, best of luck down at CIM. Thank you very and, much. And uh, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Peter Bromka, everybody. Ooh, today's a big day at Tracklandia. We've got our first Olympic medalist on the show.
You like that? Oh, smell it. All right, our next guest is the American record holder in the steeplechase. He's run the fastest 1500 by an American on American soil. He's run 1302 in the 5K. He's a World Championships bronze medalist and an Olympic silver medalist in the steeplechase. Women want to be him and men want to be with him. <laughs> He's the one, the only, man with the golden bun, the steeples champ, Evan Jagger, everybody. Yeah. Take a seat. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, Evan. Yeah, I'm excited. This is super cool. Yeah, there's you. Yeah, that's, that's me. Hey, uh, so you remember signing that baby in the grocery store? Yeah, I totally do. Yeah, I think I was picking up some burgers or something, and I was looking all runnery, full tights. Oh, yeah. Rain jackets, sweaty, like probably wet from rain, and... Yeah, I, the full tights in the grocery store. That like, I know, I know. I <laughs> swore I would never do it, and then I got. I just get super lazy, and I feel like Portland is just very accepting, and you just kind of get lulled into it. Yeah, you get. Yeah, I feel like ten years ago, that wasn't like that wasn't a thing. People wearing tights to the grocery store, but then no. the whole running boom kind of happened, like the second. Very one, unfortunately. And, yeah. yeah, and it brought in the yeah, yeah. the tights again. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a great look, but yeah, yeah I, I went in and uh, this guy came up to me and he started talking to me and I was like, oh yeah, like nice to meet someone that enjoys running and he's like, can you sign something for me? I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, this is my grandson, <laughs> my son, he'd, he'd kill me if, if I did this in front of him, but can you just sign his hand? And I was like, this is really weird, but yes, okay. So it started out normal, and then it got kind of weird. Yeah, it started that. off, I mean, kind of normal, but yeah, yeah, it got really weird. <laughs> Have you signed any, anything else that compares to that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've signed like a forehead or two. <laughs> I uh, signed chests, and these are all high school boys. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, that's fine. What you yeah, do yeah. In a, yeah, with a pen is your, your thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, when, when did you know that this hair was going to be a thing for you? Like, when did you think, all right, I got something here. Let's just roll with this. Uh, I mean, I had long hair pretty much all of high school. And I think I cut it um, track season a sophomore year and then junior year uh, I just let it grow and I think I kind of always just liked having long hair but I had a like a really good cross-country season and uh, I think that was kind of when I started getting some notoriety and um, I think I had my first girlfriend then so I was like yeah this must be like a good thing going here so <laughs> I just kept it going <laughs> all right so yeah you can't change what works yeah exactly <laughs> so that's wait when what year was that when did that happen uh, that was Junior year of high school. Okay. And I've had long hair ever since. Long hair ever since. Yeah. Because it used to be like the, the down to here and then you got the down. Oh, to yeah. Here. I went, I had bowl cut for like a long time growing up. I had, uh, I had rat tail for like. Oh, no way. Oh, you yeah, did. yeah. I had the rat hair, uh, the, the bowl cut rat hair, rat tail combo for like a couple of years in like elementary school. Was that like a decision that you made? Yeah, like, it was. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, oh, and my okay. parents like didn't stop me for some reason. <laughs> All right. They just let it go. I was like, okay. He's his own man. We're gonna let yeah. him have a rat tail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I went through phases of like buzzing my hair and let it grow back out. And then, uh, yeah, cut it sophomore year. And then just, it's been long ever since. Nice. Yeah. Well, it, it's uh, it's become a thing on on T-shirts in the past. Like, where where did that whole uh, Jagger is my homeboy T-shirt yeah. start? Uh, that what? was probably that same year, like probably junior, uh, junior senior year of high school. That was a high school thing. Yeah. Um, I think I've got a. Oh no. What's this? Wait a second. We got a mouse pad. Oh here. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good haircut. That's uh, <laughs> no, all right. It's good. Yeah, that was probably the first one. Um, we had a, a pretty close family friend that was an artist. He is a really good artist. That's not like the best <laughs> picture. But um, no, he's a really good artist. And 
I'm sure either my friends or my parents, I can't remember which, just wanted to make t-shirts and he was super into it. And so they just kind of started it, did it in high school, a couple of years, junior year, senior year. I was obviously super embarrassed. Um, all my yeah. friends wore them down at state and cheered me on, but. Well, that's cool. Yeah, but it's continued. And Cause, yeah, I saw some at the trials, I think, in like 2012 or something. Yeah, 2012, 2016, <laughs> yeah. I think, 2017. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still going. People waving mouse pads around at the trials. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much just my parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those are one of those people. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, so, well, you've been at the front of American steepling for quite some time now. What, how many years has it been? Like five, uh, seven, six, seven years. Yeah. So yeah, I guess so. Man, it's 2018. Huh? Yeah, it's it's going fast. <laughs> yeah. Too fast. Oh, we're getting old. Uh, yeah. No, you still got a lot of time left. We're no, good. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you you in the in that race down in Rio in the yeah. Olympics, capped it off uh, with a silver medal there. Mm -hmm. When you knew that you were gonna get that silver medal at what point in that race did you feel did you feel like that because it was it down the home stretch or yeah uh i don't think i knew i had the silver in my hand until yeah probably that home stretch um because I, I was still working on catching kemboy over that last water jump and uh i think i went by him with about 100 to go and he just didn't respond at all so um yeah i got obviously pretty pumped uh lifelong goal and uh yeah but i yeah i think i probably knew that i i 99 percent had like a medal in my hand probably like three laps out and that was that was a pretty cool feeling but you had to stay focused there yeah right? for sure um yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess definitely. in the steeplechase right uh, like you're yeah. going over barriers yeah, and stuff yeah there's water yeah i've seen it there's a lot of shit happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, you don't know what can happen in a steeplechase. I do know what can happen in a steeplechase. <laughs> I was, I, uh, which, that was an incredible race, too. What we're talking about is Paris, when you yeah. set the American record. Uh, fast, probably the fastest time ever. Uh, falling. Falling, yeah. 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 But uh, uh, that, what is that like, running, to run eight flat, and, uh, and, and you know that there, there's, more, there's more in you? Yeah, I mean, it's super disappointing. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to go there, all yeah. right? I was, I was putting a... <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was a re really weird um, mix of emotions. Uh, on one hand, um, like, I had this super good opportunity to kind of go just finish the race and uh, do something um, that only, like, 11 guys have ever done in the history of the sport. And... Um, no guys uh, born outside of Africa have ever broken eight. So that's obvious. That's been a huge goal of mine since I started steepling. Yeah, and, of course. Um, so like having it that close, like you could taste it and like just messing up that late in the race was pretty devastating. But uh, at the same time, um, that was kind of, that was for me like my coming out party. And that was when I kind of realized that um, like I deserve to run with the big boys now and mm -hmm. um, that kind of opened my eyes up to what was possible for the rest of my career. So it, it was like, it was really good, but also like terrible at the same time. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad you feel that way about it, that you feel good about it because I know like yeah. coming from coming from me it probably doesn't mean a lot but I think that like that showed a lot of people like wow this guy's the real deal he can do that and run eight flat and you probably you scared a lot of people when you did that. yeah it was it was fun but it was it, <laughs> like in the moment um running the race was super super fun like I've I've never felt better in a race I don't think and um yeah that came crashing down quick <laughs> <laughs> but it All was right. still it was still a good experience nice yeah. Let's let's move on. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you you've run in Paris and yeah. you've run in uh, Monaco and you've run in Rio and what's uh what's the coolest place that you've you've competed in? Uh, I think Monaco is definitely my favorite stadium. Um, Why is that? It's it's this super very intimate uh, 
track. Um, not, it's definitely not the biggest stadium I've ever been in. It's, it's probably only like, I don't know, like 40 or 50 rows deep. Um, just seats completely lining the stadium. Uh, the audience is like, they're right next to the track. So uh, it feels very intimate. It's really loud, um, but also it's like, it's one of the most beautiful places like I've ever been to. Oh, it's yeah. right on the Mediterranean, it's set on this like, this like kind of cliff kind of comes down to the city and it's always perfect weather there. So it, that's one of my, and it's a super fast track. Like a lot uh -huh. of really fast times have been run there. And um, yeah, that's one of my favorite. Um, also Berlin was Berlin. super cool. And yeah. that's the old Olympic stadium. The old there, Olympic right? stadium. Yeah. Man, Massive. I love old stadiums. Yeah. They love their track there. Nice blue track. I love blue tracks. Oh, yeah. And, Go blue, right? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously a lot of history too. So, so you're a, well, you're a big Chicago sports fan. Yeah. Growing up just outside Chicago. Yeah. So what do you think it would take to get American sports fans fired up about track? Um, do you think you can get some of the, the Bears fans to jump on the track bandwagon? That would be tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, one thing is I don't think track is like broadcasted all that well in the US. So people watch track once every four years, pretty much. So there's, they're not just, they're just not invested into it. Um, I feel like, I mean, I get to watch Bears games. Like I can find stream of every Bears game if I want to, even yeah. if it's not on TV here and I can watch Bears game um, every single week. And that's pretty hard to do uh, for a lot of track races. And um, that coupled with um, when it is on TV, it's, not broadcasted great like marathons there's just minutes and minutes of the race just completely being missed i feel like most sure. of the time for the steeple there's usually like a four minute break in between an eight minute race well, in the middle of eight race. yeah so it, it's not great but um i think uh i think one of the things um byron track club does pretty well is uh, we have a lot of our pro athletes engaged with some BTC youth runners, um, and I feel like that'll be helpful. Like just having some sort of a connection with uh, the community and Grow the fan base. Exactly. Like that. Yeah, and um, I don't know. Maybe maybe beer in the stadium. Oh, that'll help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Get people a little rowdy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your, your group of friends from back home that you stayed in touch with, uh, they're big, like, football, baseball fan types. Yeah. They're your boys. Yeah. Like, they're the, the Chicago. Boys. Yeah, the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago boys, sports fans. Oh, yeah, they're boys. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but they follow your career. Yeah, they do. And, uh, yeah, they, they watch your races. Yeah, so. surprisingly. I'm still, I'm, <laughs> yeah, like, in high school, yeah, they were into it because they could go to the, the meets. But, yeah, I'm, I'm they're still, like, texting me before pretty much every race like how how can i watch the race so I'm the like, boys just know without being told that uh yeah i think uh my my parents post a lot on facebook about oh, okay. my upcoming races so <laughs> that helps yeah so they'll get off of espn.com or whatever and then yeah look at facebook for a little bit yeah, and yeah. see when you're racing yeah nice yeah what do they think of your profession um <laughs> uh Be honest, come on what do the boys think they <laughs> Uh, they make fun of me a lot. <laughs> um, it, I mean, one one guy in particular, you met him, Nick. He uh, he brings up, um, he says stuff all the time, like, oh, uh, like, like we should we should go do this, but you know Evan, he'll just, he'll just finish second, or... Oh, oh, like they pull oh, stuff. hinting at your silver there, huh? Yeah, like, oh, I, come on. like I can't get the job done, I can't get the gold, so... <laughs> oh, jeez. They, uh, they poke fun at, at that a lot, and they just disregard, like, USAs and that kind of stuff, because Olympics is the only thing that matters. To them, so, to the yeah, boys. Yeah, to the boys. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, obviously, the short shorts, that's another thing. Um, you can fund <laughs> me for that. Um, yeah, pretty much, uh, 
I mean, they're they're super supportive, but they also like they make fun of me more than anyone else I know. So they well, you need that to keep you grounded, right? Ex exactly. I think that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need those boys in your life. Yeah. Yeah, I've got some. I mean, this show has just gotten so big, you know, and it's tough to... Dude, I, uh, I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got guys coming up to you asking for autographs yeah, for their grandchildren. Yeah, no. yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. My life's a zoo now. Yeah. yeah. Signing babies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Signing whatever. Uh, <laughs> just somebody give me something to sign already. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you and the boys, uh, you were telling me that you had a... Um, a story you were out one night in Portland uh, down was it at the Dixie and you had a run-in with a celeb oh yeah yeah um, this was a long time ago uh, this was yeah probably uh, 2010 11 um, my buddy Nick was out here and um, as boys do we went out to the, the bar and uh -huh. uh, we ran into Mark Cuban actually and the Mark Cuban the Mark Cuban uh, owner of uh, the Dallas Mavericks yeah and uh, they were in town playing the Trailblazers and I for some reason thought it would be a good idea to um, ask him if he wanted a drink <laughs> and he said yeah for some reason I don't know why and I was like oh okay and so uh, I went to the bartender and the first thing I could think of was uh, a Jagerbomb so, a bomb, a Jaeger bomb. Yeah. Not just a shot of Jaeger. No, Jaeger bomb. <laughs> and I gave him the Jaeger bomb and told him, You're welcome. And <laughs> so here's this Jaeger bomb, yeah. Mark Cuban. You're welcome. And he's like, Here you go, bro. Like, you're welcome. Uh -huh. And then uh, proceeded to grill him on um, getting into the track and field game. I told him he should, yeah, get invested in track and field. And he, probably completely disregarded that and immediately forgot about that because of the Jaeger. <laughs> because of the Jaeger. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. I'm sure he was really interested in the, yeah. Yeah, the concept, like starting a track team down in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Jaeger bomb. It's just too enticing. Yeah. That'll put people over the edge. Yeah. Um, Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, something I heard... Uh, is that you, well, you compare in steeplechasing, you've compared running up to the water barrier like doing a layup. Is that no, right? I have never said that. All right. I didn't. <laughs> All right. I have never said that. Okay. Do you know who said that? I, I think you're uh, confusing two different things. Well, all right. And Jerry said that, but... <laughs> okay, good. I wasn't totally off no, that, you, right? No, you weren't off. All right, no. good. Yeah. Um, Do you, you, don't, you don't think of it that way at all, though? No, definitely oh, not. Really? Uh, Jerry thought for some reason that uh, I might be good at the steeplechase because I looked athletic doing a layup. Oh, nice. And that's why I steeple now. That's why you started? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, most runners aren't, like, athletic in that way, skilled. Can do layups. Yeah, can do, yeah. yeah. That's a tough thing to do if I you're know. a yeah. marathoner. I uh, yeah, I think I made it look pretty good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, like, looking at the steeplechase scene, it tends to be, like, a lot of scrappy guys, like, guys who can hang in there, like, just kind of grab on with their teeth. Tough guys. Uh, yeah, tough guys for. Not this guy. Well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't. Yeah, you you have like put a different kind of finesse and uh, and brought an elegance to the steeplechase that that wasn't there before. I appreciate. That. Yeah, are you thinking uh, when you're out there like, God, I'm just trying to run as smooth as I can. Um, yeah, I mean, I always just try to look as pretty as possible. And <laughs> oh wow. That's here. Here I thought you weren't trying very hard. No, but. I try. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. No, um, honestly, uh, a, lot of, a lot of that has to, uh, I, I have to give credit to Pascal, my, our, our strength coach and uh, my steeple coach. He was an Olympian in the steeplechase in 2000, and um, he just drilled good form in, into my head um, the entire first year especially, but um, my entire career. Uh, We've been super focused on that, and 
Um, yeah, I, I practiced hurdling multiple times a week, every week for the first year. So I, I was hurdling two or three times a week um, from probably like October until um, throughout the track season, um, my first season steepling. And uh, yeah, I have to give a lot of credit to him. And uh, we've yeah, we've practiced a lot. Yeah, you guys have got quite the crew over there now. Well, <laughs> yeah. <there's> a... <laughs> I honestly, yeah, I didn't think anything was, I didn't think we were going to have a steeple crew for sure. Um, my first year doing it, I thought I was going to have to do steeple like by myself for the next 10 years. Yeah. And well, you've made it cool in the U S and now everybody wants to do it. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's what, yeah, what I gather. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Take it from me. Who knows? Yeah. But, uh, this is, I reached out to some of your, uh, your crew members over there and, uh, just ask them if they had anything that they wanted to ask Which you about. Crew members? Oh, over at the BTC. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a part of a different crew that? Uh, well, my boys. Uh, oh I, yeah, I no, no. I would be worried if my boys were asking. If they had questions for you. Yeah. Well, we got a few here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one. Uh, why is your nickname the American? Um. <laughs> uh, that that started probably first or second year steepling. Um. We would, uh, either Dan Hewling or Ryan came up with it, or it didn't come up with it, but really started it. Um, we'd be like kind of going back and watching races together, like of meets that we ran at. So like we'd run at, in, uh, at Prefontaine Classic and like me, Dan and, and Andy Bear would like all be in the steeplechase. And then like Ryan would be, Ryan and CD would be in the 5K, and we'd rewatch and like just kind of critique the races. And like after like two or three Diamond League meetings, where uh, Tim Hutchins, Tim Hutchings, yeah, he's got he, that gruff voice. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a great commentator, English. Uh -huh. um, he would he'd be commentating, and every time he talked about me, he'd, he'd say, "It's the American Evan Jaga," <laughs> and yeah. and then and Dan Hewling and. Andy Bear, <laughs> and then you do this, the uh, same thing with Ryan Hill and Chris Derrick and the American Evan Jaga, <laughs> and uh, we noticed that like after a couple of meets, and and then they just started calling me the American. <laughs> Here comes the American. <laughs> That's great. Oh, this is a good one from Matt Hughes. Oh, uh, no. He says to rank the BTC men's team in order of most athletic to least athletic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is, yeah, this is a constant argument. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we, we play sports together. We play games together. Um, and obviously, like, everyone thinks they're super athletic. Oh, and, sure. Independent and with, with Jerry calling me athletic doing layups, it kind of, that probably sparked the conversation also. But um, So everybody knows where you stand, in Jerry's eyes at least. Tops. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, if, uh, if, I had to, if I had to say, um, so Dan thinks he's the most athletic because... <laughs> of course he does. Of course Did he you does. you hear that laugh out in the crowd? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because... Dan is really good at stuff like bags or cornhole, if you call it cornhole. Wait, that's athletics uh, to him? Yes. Uh, <laughs> he's good at like frisbee golf. He's good at darts. Um, <laughs> I'm the most athletic yeah. in the group. <laughs> and uh, it kind of stops there. Uh, but I, I would have to say Hughes is probably the most athletic. Um, oh, this was his question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. He, I mean, yeah, he's, he can pick pretty much anything up. He's pretty good at a lot of stuff. He played hockey growing up, uh, Canadian. soccer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously they do. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, who's, who are on the, okay, the bottom so, guys? Like, uh, the least athletic fellas. Um, just hang them out there. Uh, probably. Bumby. Ooh. Unfortunately. Oh, man. Well. Uh, CD used to be really athletic, but the, I think the marathon has probably taken a little bit of a toll on Is that on what him. happened? Uh, yeah. Man. Yeah. He, he's, CD's pretty good at basketball. He's 
I think he's good at baseball. He seems like a real fundamentals guy. He's a fundamentals guy. Masters. Yeah, this. yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's I think that's if he had to classify himself. A lot of chess passes. <laughs> yeah. Bounce passes. Bounce even. passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh gosh, I might go Hughes. Um, I'll say myself. Okay. Oh. Um, it's humble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Josh Thompson, uh, he played um, he played basketball at community college. So uh, I haven't seen much from him, but I think he's got to be pretty athletic. Um, he also claims to have dunked at some point. Oh, he's he, like a five nine guy, right? He's like five eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's. Uh, I, I haven't seen it, but if that's the case, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> sure. Um, so I'll throw him up there. Uh, I think Ryan is, he's like sneaky athletic. Ryan Hill. Yeah. Um, I think most of the middle guys are all kind of, we're all just kind of throw a blanket o- over utility us. Utility guys, yeah. Yeah. But I'd say, yeah, like, Q's on one end, Dan definitely on the other. Oh, you're going to put him down yeah, there, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, bucked by the Stieflers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, uh. We've got a, a couple more questions for you before we let you go, but uh, going forward, uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Um, well, I would, I mean, I would love to finish off like the metal um, kind of collection. Because you've got a silver and a bronze. Yeah, so I'd, I'd love to get the gold, and then obviously I've wanted to break eight for forever, so mm-hmm. uh, breaking eight is still a big one. Um, and aside from that, in the, in the steeple, there's, there's not too much left. Yeah, uh, I'd yeah. say so. Another U.S. title, but I, I want to keep that streak going. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that a seven now? Seven right now, yeah. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then I think when I get those two boxes uh, checked off, I think uh, I'll be excited for kind of the future and um, Calling up Mark Cuban again to see uh, yeah, what you guys can get together. off the ground. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure something Go out. Go to Shark Tank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let, yeah. me know, let me know when that happens. Yeah, I'll probably bring yeah. you with me. Actually. Yeah, we could do a presentation somehow. Yeah, yeah. That's what we got for you, Mark yeah. Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before you go, we've got to play a game with you. Okay. So... Uh, we put this together. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little nervous too. I don't okay. know what this is all about. <laughs> but uh, we're going to bring Andy back up. Okay. Well, Evan doesn't know this, but uh, he's playing for uh, a Jager bomb shot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I might just lose. <laughs> okay, so we, we called this game Jager Jeopardy. Um, not everything is about yourself, it's just, it just sounds catchy. Mm-hmm. But I like we have, it. We have three topics running, Chi Town, hair. Based mostly on yourself, <laughs> entirely on yourself. Um, There's more to you than that, I yeah. think. But so you, you pick your category. How many points you want to go for? There's a question behind it. Um, as soon as I finish the question, you guys have to, you know, just like Jeopardy, buzz in. Well, we um, just hit the table. I mean, we guess we could do that. I didn't really have time to go get buzzers. So I was panicking. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Jay, you're our guest. Our guest. Our guest. Would you like to go first and pick the first category? How many points you'd like to go for? Um, yeah, I'll go, uh, running for three. Quality choice. <clears throat> okay. This runner won the 1500 and 800 double at the 2010 NCAA. It's the first time in 26 years. Extremely handsome, loved by all. He overcame incredible, uh, uh, caramel odds, took down some of the most talented human beings on planet Earth. He is known for his height, charm, smile, muscles, strength, beauty, humor, charm again. <laughs> And his loyalty to the Oregon Ducks. Yes, Evan, that's you. Uh, is it Matt? You better. Yeah, you, you better. Oh, you, yeah, uh, that's absolutely right. I didn't even know that one, man. <laughs> that's a long one. Uh, great job. Wow. Three, three points for Evan. Wow, wow good yeah, work. You to go again. That was a tough one. Was, yeah. <laughs> they write, those interns write those things detailed. Yeah, is that how this is going to be? <laughs> so, Evan, you want you to go again. Um... Go Shy Town three. Shy Town three. All right. Born in Chicago, this Hollywood actor is best known for his lead roles in Blade Runner, Indiana Jones, and Star Wars. Who is this actor? 
at all. Really? What? <laughs> Were you what hit is it? This? Wait, what? do I? Did you buzz in? Mm. Oh, was the premature buzz? Oh, can I do it? Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's absolutely correct. Wait. It's Harrison Ford. Who who? If we win, who gets the shot? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good question. It's a very valid point. Uh, the the winner decides who gets the shot. Okay. There we go. That's fair. Well, you're. <laughs> might want to try. Oh yeah. <laughs> you might want to try a little bit, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, Evan, yeah, you're still up. Uh, hair for three. Hair for three. <clears throat> His original name is Scott Thompson. He's been in various movies, but is more of a stand-up comedian. He is known by his stage name and his super curly red afro hair. Who is this comedian? Oh! Carrot Top. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Carrot Top. I didn't know his name was Scott. Well, better known Scott as Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson, huh? Hmm. All right, Jeff. Okay. Do I get to keep this one? You can keep that right in front of you. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, oh, I'm nervous now. Jeff knows the rules. Uh, I will go with Shy Town for one. Shy Town for one. What happens if we tie? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've never played this game before. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Jeff has no idea how this goes. <laughs> this stadium is second oldest in its sport. And it's home to the 2016 World Championship of Chicago Cubs. Oh, come on. <laughs> Wrigley. Wrigley Field. Field is absolutely correct. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hmm. That's uh, two left. That's okay. Okay. Uh, let's go running one. Running for one. Yeah. Oh, it's the daily double. Oh. It's the daily double. Now, the way this works, we've got our little timer here. I'll give you each 30 seconds. These are point, a point apiece, six questions, six potential points. So, Jeff, we'll have you go first. Do I have to do anything? You have to just sit here and listen to you. <laughs> I'm going to read the question. Oh, OK. You can answer, pass. You're the man with all the answers. I hold the power. Ready? Because it's Jeopardy. Oh, because it's Jeopardy. That's yeah, that's correct. Yeah. All right, you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. At 59 feet, eight and, eight and three quarter inches, who has the triple jump American record? Christian Taylor. That's correct. True or false, over one billion running shoes are sold over worldwide every year. True. That is correct. She won two World Cross Country titles without wearing shoes. Who was she? Uh, Zola Budd. That's correct. When was the first annual New York City Fifth Avenue Mile? 1980. 81. Oh! Yes. Who is the 2,000 meter American record holder? Uh, <laughs> Steve Scott. Jim Spe Spice, Spivey. Oh, Spivey. Spivey. Um, that is time, but for good, just for fun, how far did Bill Rogers run in one hour to set the American record? Uh, any guesses? 12.7. You're not serious. Yeah. Is that really a guess? Yeah. Oh my god, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, don't you, don't you round up there? 12.77. That's almost an El Dorado. Is that really a guess? <laughs> wow. Oh, I am not. Oh, I'm good at this I'm game. Not huh? <laughs> I'm not excited. I'm not excited. Wait, did you get only get? Did you only get three? I think so. I don't know Two, how four, this six. works. Daily double. Daily double. Mm. So I give you double points. Mm. Okay, mm. Evan. This is not good. How many points does he have right now? I have six, seven. seven. Mm. Daily double for two. Two, four, six. Nine. Oh, mm. nine. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Evan. This, is, this could be for the game. Yeah. All right, for 30 seconds. Who is the American record holder in the Seeple Chase? Uh, Evan Jager. Evan Jager. He runs the, for the Bowman Track Club. He's a PR of 329.97, 1500. Who is this athlete? Uh, Lopez Lamont. Evan Jager. Wait, 329. 332.97. Oh, I uh, thought you said. That's what I heard, too. I heard who, won a, who won a silver medal in the Rio Olympic Games in the Seeple Chase? Evan Jager. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> who has won the, at least the last seven U.S. championships in the Seeple Chase? Evan Jager. Oh my God. True or false, Evan Jager is better known as, oh my God, he's totes cute. You should totes talk to him. Ew, no, Karen, go talk to him. You're scared. Ew, TTYL, maybe false. <laughs> that's, that's definitely false. False. <laughs> Quick, finish the sentence. Jeff, you stink. How could you let our guest beat you? We rigged this game and somehow you still managed to let blank beat you. I think that's you. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. Blank beat you. I think you just won. So yeah. It's I don't you. think I need it's to finish you. this question. Oh. <laughs> All right. We know who won. Evans, I wow. wear. <laughs> All right. 
All, All right. right, Evan, thank you very much for yeah. coming out today. Mm. It's thank been a you pleasure. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you to fun. all of you for coming out to Tracklandia. Uh, thank you to Downstream. Thank you to Portland Track for uh, allowing us to do this for as long as uh, they will let us do this. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Uh, have a great evening, everybody. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>